So let's talk about process control, which can or may also have the name as automation of processes. Is well, as the name implies, we're going to control a process via computer software and all that, which will help us to automate, automate, or make it automatic. So, for example, if this pump doesn't work, well, the fluid will stop, a valve will close, and it will redirect to this valve, will open, the pump will start turning on, and the flow continues as normal. And this little guy right here keeps working as nothing happened. Or maybe, let me check out here, we had these, well, same case pumps, maybe compressors. Uh, let me show you another example. Maybe we have this oven right here and the flow rate of air and fuel is maybe one to nine. But this starts dropping in temperature. So the only thing you can do is decrease the rate. So same fuel, less oxygen. So less oxygen probably is going to decrease the amount of nitrogen which is taking all the heat up so maybe this will help and it will increase the temperature so instead of you actually going downstairs and open and closing the valves and making the calculations you have a software which may, will make it automatically for you and the software will open and close gates or valves and will remain the temperature right there so that's the essence of that so what do you study well study dynamic behavior which is let's say that if you make an action it go up let's say you open uh, the door of your house let's play the, put this example right here you are uh, have a, a the AC right here so you know that the AC doesn't go directly to the desired temperature it starts well in this case decreasing so you're at maybe 30 Celsius starts going down 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 you have the set point at 25 celsius which is comfort temperature so you know it starts down 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 and eventually it remains here it doesn't keep going why is that because you have a computer that knows how to make a let's say a loop so it checks temperature if temperature is fine stop making air or stop compressing if temperature is not fine keep compressing and repeat so that's dynamic behavior and we're going to start analyzing and we will need to study a lot of maths to make this simpler. So we start with the Laplace transform, which probably you've seen it before in the differential equations. We're going to study mainly 80% is first order processes or first order differential equation and the second one is second order processes. We are interested in how process response as the name implies, is how much time does it take to take it from 30 to 25 Celsius? What will happen if we have a very, very huge drastic change, but maybe we cannot stop it so it starts oscillating like this, hopefully gets to the level, or maybe you can never achieve that. So this is very typically when you are either hot or, uh, I mean, warm or cold. So you turn off the AC and you start getting warm you turn it on and then you start getting cold. So you can never find it. So the set point is never achieved. Then once you get the math, you will be able to make linearizations of nonlinear models, which is essentially block math and plenty of mathematics that talk about process control. And we see feedback controllers, which is all these guys right here, closed loops, multiple loops, cascade loops and controls, what we do is, well, once this, check this out, and then do this. The more complex typically gets the better, but not, not always. So you're going to see how it works. And then actually understand what is a sensor, an actuator, and how they interact between each other in order to keep a certain output. So I think it's very abstract because this is more into maybe computers or maybe automation, engineering in mechatronics or whatever you can imagine and yes that is true but the problem is that if you cannot understand this well you're rarely going to understand all these computers and panels and the problem right here is that well you need to know how does this work you need to understand 
This temperature, where does it come from? You need to understand that this is actually a sensor. So I think when you're an engineer, you typically typically think this is the, let's say, the 100% truth. And no, actually, it's not. It's a sensor. You need to know where is the sensor, where exactly physically it is. It's, it is uh, maybe you know it's not, let's say you have this pipe right here and you want to know the temperature that has a fluid, but the sensor can only achieve the temperature of this or can only measure the temperature of this outside tube and it says you it's 150 Celsius, but maybe inside it's 170 Celsius. So you need to know as an engineer that there's a 20 Celsius delta. So that's why you need to understand how it works. And automation engineer will probably don't know it. And if he knows it, he doesn't care. He just wants to deliver the process, tell you it's working. And as I tell you, it's very fine to see a process panel like this, but if it is not actually working the way it is, well, you need to understand and make him fix it all the way along. So that's the why we need to understand it. We want to control processes. That's the more, most important part is control it. And then we want to autom automate the process. How do we do that? With automatic responses. So as the example said before, maybe we're having flow rates of water and we have flow rate of a solvent. We are making a mixture and we need to have a one, two, three mixture. We have one, two, and three. Maybe we are getting one to four. So you need to increase or open the valve of water or maybe close the solvent valve. Whatever you choose, you need to do it and you need to achieve the set point. That will be an automatic response. Instead of the engineer going and opening it, maybe imagine being there if they tell you, well, maybe one and a half to the left, and then you see, no, we got this still 1.3 and a half. Then maybe try three, four, then you still see no effect. One, two, three, point five, point four. And you keep going and going, so that will be kind of not useful. So it's better to have a computer making the calculations that you will eventually automate. Now, the process variable. It's very important. So if I tell you one to three, that will be actually flow rate. Let's say 10 kilograms per minute per car per each 30 kilograms per minute. So that's the set point. The total flow is 40 kilograms per hour. Sorry for per minute. So that's very important right here. So you want to interact between each other right here. Now target variables are of course 40 kilograms per minute for but how you do it if you, how do you do it if you have maybe 10 kilograms here but this only achieves 20 kilograms well you're not achieving your target variable and eventually what you want to control in chemical engineering are plenty of uh, let's say variables but the most common ones are levels material flows heat flow electricity temperature pressure volume etc so that's important to you to know that you need to get a variable and you need to get a very important uh, let's say a very representative variable if I tell you okay I want to achieve a plus B and I want to produce C and I if I know that the, pr the main problem is temperature well if I choose pressure as the most important one and I tell you yeah sure just add up some nitrogen so it increases in pressure, well, that will not make sense because the temperature is the actual variable that is in consideration. So that's why you need a chemical engineer in the process control in order to show the automation engineer how the process works and what do we need to do with it.